Step. Ready. 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 
Ladies and gentlemen, today's ceremony will begin soon. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, today's ceremony will begin soon. Please take your seats now.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation. Delivered by House Chaplain Margaret Grun Kibben. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, for the people you place in our lives and in positions of leadership of this country, we give you our deepest gratitude. For Senator Harry Reid and his fighting spirit that tirelessly sparred and parried in defense of this nation. Thank you that his journey from Searchlight Nevada found its way to our nation's capital, that he would be given opportunity to exercise his drive and passion and to go the distance in this political ring. Bless this gathering as we honor his legacy that has touched countless policies and people. Now as he rests from the joy of the work he has done for this country, having spoken plainly and listened well, may he hear your own well done for his faithful and devoted service to this legislative body and to this nation. Inspire in all who yet serve the same willingness to favor pragmatism even if it risks unpopularity and to choose a life of integrity as befits this institution. It is in your eternal name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Charles E. Schumer, Majority Leader of the United States Senate. Good morning. It is such an honor to speak today about my dear friend and mentor, Harry Reid of Searchlight Nevada, as he would proudly refer to himself. Let me first say to Harry's family, and particularly to Landra, the love of Harry's life for 62 years, who he called his rock. The only time I ever saw Harry cry was when he told me Landra had an awful car accident and had broken so many bones. He said over and over again as tears streamed down his cheeks, my poor little Landra, my poor little Landra. A couple of months ago, as you know, I lost my father Abe, but I still feel his spirit is with me every single day. Just as I know that Harry is still with you, Landra, and your family, and with all of us today and for many of us forevermore. To celebrate the life of Harry Reid under the dome of the Capitol is to partake in an exercise of contradictions. On the one hand, anyone who knew Harry could count on a few things. He rarely said goodbye on the phone, and it almost became a ritual in the first three months of any new session that each freshman would call me up and say, why is Harry mad at me? I said, no, 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 I didn't even have to tell, they didn't have to explain why. He doesn't say goodbye, just hung up, he's not mad at you. And certainly, Harry would have been deeply embarrassed and probably a little annoyed at our holding not one, but multiple ceremonies in his honor. I can hear him now. You guys organized an entire ceremony in Nevada, invited former and current presidents and senators, and you even had the front man from the killers sing and still that wasn't enough for all of you? On the other hand, even though Harry might not want this pomp and circumstance, I know a part of him would enjoy it. He was sort of like Sid Caesar when Sid Caesar gave a good line, no more applause, please. My friends, we celebrate Harry Mason Reed's final return to the Capitol because we must. Few have shaped the workings of this building like our dear friend from Nevada. Few have dedicated their lives to the work of the people quite like Harry did. And today, our feelings of both loss and gratitude are immense. I got to know Harry when I came to the Senate in 1999. We couldn't have been more different. There was me, a brash Jewish kid out of Brooklyn, and there was Harry, a soft-spoken Mormon from Searchlight. We were a match made in heaven. 
I quickly learned that even though Harry talked softly, what he said carried the force of thunder. He was honest, he was direct, and he was original. I love the story. Back in 2012, during the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, Harry summoned me to his hotel room late one of late night. I rushed over and I saw Landra in the room, but before I could say anything, Harry pulled me aside into the small little bathroom. We were right on top of each other, and he lowered his voice. He said, Chuck, I want to take care of something very important, he said. And he pulled out a wad of cash from his pocket, and he peeled off four $100 bills. You've been working hard and doing the right things to become leader, he said, but you need to dress the part. Go buy some better shoes, for goodness sakes. Later on, I asked why he pulled me into the bathroom for that conversation. His answer? So he wouldn't embarrass me in front of Landra. That was Harry Reid to a T. If you were lucky enough to be someone Harry cared about and called his friend, then he cared with you with every fiber in his being. And his generosity extended far beyond things sartorial. A few years ago, Harry called up my wife Iris and told her, I've sent you and Chuck a special gift. It's the greatest thing. You're going to love it. It's a month's subscription to Netflix. I didn't have Harry, I didn't, Iris didn't have the heart to tell him we had subscribed for four years already. Clearly, Harry wasn't big on new technology. He didn't text, he didn't mail, and as you know, whenever he called you, he'd hang up the phone so quickly that you'd think he was allergic to telecommunications. But what Harry was really allergic to was the artifice of politics that he considered a distraction from his true passion, getting good things done in this capital. Harry never forgot where he came from, nor did he forget the people his childhood friends and neighbors who, just like Harry early on, struggled to get by, and he kept up with so many of them. We remember hearing all the stories. In Harry's view, the government had a moral obligation to see to it that these people had every opportunity to secure a better life for themselves and their families. Harry was tough as nails, a fighter to his core, but one of the most compassionate individuals you could ever imagine. In short, he was one of the most incredible and generous individuals I've ever met, the sort of person you come across only a handful of times in your life. When you lose someone as special as Harry, they're never gone. They're always with you. For those of us in the Senate Democratic Caucus, I think that was especially true last week as we observed the anniversary of the violent insurrection against our U.S. Capitol. That day, we saw so many acts of selflessness and heroism by our U.S. Capitol Police, who once counted among their esteemed, esteemed ranks a young Harry, who served as an officer while studying at GW Law School. In so many ways, so many ways, Harry was a guardian and a steward of the Senate, literally and figuratively. He took great care of the Senate as an institution, but he also knew that the Senate had to adapt to changing times. As we confront the challenges in, of the coming weeks and months, I take comfort knowing that Harry is with us in spirit, walking alongside us as we continue the work he dedicated himself to for so many years. May God rest his immortal soul, and may his memory be a blessing to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Good morning, Madam Vice President, distinguished congressional leaders, and our special guest, the family of Harry Reid. 
Today, as Speaker of the House, it is my solemn and official honor to welcome back to the United States Capitol a legendary leader of great integrity, a pioneering patriot, and our dear friend, Harry Mason Reed. On behalf of the Congress, I extend a special welcome to his loving and wife, his rock, Londra, with whom he shared a beautiful love and happiness. Their happiness was a source of joy to all of us who love them. His dear children, Lana, Rory, Josh, Key, and Leaf, all of whom, <clears throat> and his grandchildren, of all of whom he was very, very proud. On Saturday, we gathered in Nevada for a celebration of Harry's life. Listening to the leadership of his church and the adoring comments of his children, it is clear that Harry's strength sprang from his faith and his family. And his patriotism springs from his love of our country and his commitment to its future. It is fitting that we pay final tribute to Harry here in the United States Capitol. It is here when he stood as a sentinel of democracy on the Capitol Police Force as he worked his way through law school. It is here where he served for more than three decades representing his beloved home state of Nevada, including two terms in the House of Representatives. Chuck always says he was decades in the Senate, and you're talking about that. And it's here where his portrait hangs in these hallowed halls, offering a source of strength and inspiration to us all. From his humble roots and searchlight to the spotlight of Capitol Hill, his entire life was defined by defying long odds. The 12 years that he and I served together as leaders in our respective houses, uh, it allowed me the privilege of watching him defy those odds every day. Indeed, to see him lead and legislate was to see a master at work with a brilliant strategic mind, command of the rules, and respect for his senators. And despite long odds, with his leadership in the Congress, working together with President Obama and then Vice President Biden, we forged great progress for American families. The American Recovery Act, the Dodd-Frank reforms, and the Affordable Care Act, to name a few. And as we all know, Harry truly loved his home state of Nevada. Over his entire career, he fought tirelessly for Nevada in every possible way, for its working families, whether preserving its natural environment or protecting its political environment, including its coveted role in the presidential selection process. As one who served with more than, for more than 12 years, there's much more I want to say about Harry. But as you all know, he was a man of a few words, and he would want us all to be of a few words. As has been referenced by, by Leader Schumer uh, and others who knew him, when we spoke on the phone, we spoke on the phone nearly every day, legislative day, and sometimes more than once a day. So I probably hold the record for being hung up on more than anybody. Many times I would call him back and say, Harry, I was only beginning to thank you and praise you for what you had done. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. He was so modest. As he came and mentioned, and, uh, referenced his retirement, announced his retirement, I said, Harry, we're going to have a big dinner calling all your friends from around the country and certainly from Nevada, starting with your family, to pay tribute to you. I don't want you to spend the money. Spend it on feeding the poor. I don't want to hear any praise. That's how he was. Needless to say, his humility made him, some would say, unique in the political arena. It also made him truly beloved by so many who work in these halls, whether his colleagues whether it's friends in the House and the Senate, whether maintenance people, Capitol Police, those who 
uphold the institution of the Congress of the United States. Everyone loved Harry. Chuck talked about gifts. Uh, I had to put, at the end of his term, he came over to my office and said, I have something for you I want you to remember me by. I thought it might be a note or a photo or something, but instead he brought in and unwrapped a bald eagle, an American symbol, a bald eagle, stuffed, but still with the wind, the wind, the breeze fluttering its wings. I said, Harry, what happened? Did you go hunting and accidentally shoot a bald eagle, an endangered species? He said, no. He flew into a live wire, so I call him Sparky. I said, okay, well, except it's then Sparky, but with his permission, and appropriately, we have named him Harry. Sparky flew from the leader's office to the speaker's office, now Harry. As we know, before Harry entered the political arena, he could hold his own in the boxing ring. So it is fitting to close, I think, by quoting Muhammad Ali, whom Harry admired and whose immortal words capture Harry's fighting spirit. Muhammad Ali said, impossible is not a declaration, it is a dare. Harry would be the first to admit that he wasn't the biggest, the loudest, or the strongest, but he was tough and relentless. He conquered the impossible, and he made the world a better place. Harry Reid made the world a better place. History will remember him as one of the most consequential Senate majority leaders of all time. But those of us fortunate enough to know him and love him will remember also his character and compassion, his goodness, his goodness. To his many loved ones, thank you for sharing Harry Reid with the country and with the Congress. May it be a comfort to you, Landra to your beloved children and grandchildren and great-grandchild and the great state of Nevada, the grace, grateful nation mourns your loss, that so many people are praying for you at this sad time. God truly blessed America with the life and leadership of Harry Reid, leader Harry Reid. May he rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. Army Chorus.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction, delivered by Senate Chaplain Barry C. Black. Let us pray. God, be with us until we meet again with Harry Reed in that land beyond sun, moon, and stars, where the days know neither dawn nor darkness. We leave him to your care as we remember that not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for the love of his life and the wind beneath his wings, precious Landra. Comfort her with the balm of your grace, and may she feel your palpable embrace. Lord, we pray for the children, grandchildren and great-grand. Sustain them in all of their tomorrows. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine according to his power working in us. To him be glory, majesty and might, dominion and power, forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain at your seats until escorted to pay your respects by the sergeants at arms staff. 